Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation from the book 500 Mathematical Challenges. It's a really nice book with a good collection of problems. I'm going to share the links down below. So we have this equation, x plus 1 times x cubed plus 1 equals 30x cubed divided by x squared plus 1. The original equation is in a polynomial form, but I just wrote it as a rational equation. So here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two expressions. And that's going to give me x to the fourth plus x plus x cubed plus 1. And then, obviously, I'm going to distribute it over the x squared plus 1. And that should give me 30x cubed. So let's go ahead and simplify this and see what type of equation we get from here. Let's go ahead and write this expression in standard form. I will probably write the x squared plus 1 first because I'm kind of used to uh, writing the, you know, the shorter one first. So let me write it like this. At the same time, I'm kind of arranging the terms here, so putting that expression in standard form. And now I can go ahead and distribute the x squared first. That's going to give me x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x cubed plus x squared. And then I'm going to distribute the 1 plus x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x plus 1. And finally, it's equal to 30x cubed. Now, obviously, we can go ahead and bring the 30x cubed uh, and subtract it from x cubed and get an equation. But let's go ahead and rearrange the terms first. So we have x to the 6th power. So it's we have an hexic equation here, right? And there's no formula, unfortunately, for that. So we can only solve special types of equations, or we can estimate. Or we can use rational rule theorem. So we have x to the 5th, and then we have x to the 4th. We've taken care of this, we've taken care of this, and we've taken care of that. Now we have x cubed twice, so that's going to give you 2x cubed, right? And then I'm going to subtract the 30x cubed. That's going to give me negative 28x cubed. So we've taken care of all the x cubes. And now we have x squared, x, and 1. And the whole thing is equal to 0. This type of equation is very interesting. These are symmetrical equations. They're very special. But how do you solve them? That's the biggest question, right? So first of all, notice that x equals 0 is not a solution. Now, why do I have to check that? Because I'm going to divide something, uh, both sides by something. That includes x. And how do you figure out what to divide by? You look at the term in the middle. And we happen to have x cubed in the middle, so I'm going to divide everything by x cubed. All right? And then, obviously, we're going to do this and use substitution. If you divide x to the 6 by that, you're going to get x cubed, and then you're going to get x squared, and then you're going to get x. If you divide this by x cubed, you're going to get minus 28, and then x squared divided by x cubed is going to be 1 over x, and then you're going to get 1 over x squared, and then finally you're going to get 1 over x cubed, and this, it's still equal to 0. So we're allowed to divide by x cubed because x does not equal 0. We have to check that first, okay? Now, we got a really nice equation, and you know why? Because we can go ahead and pair these terms up. That's what is really cool about symmetrical equations. So we take this with that. That gives us x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, which is nice. And then we take x squared with 1 over x squared. Notice how the terms get together. And then we have x plus 1 over x, which is super duper nice again. And then finally, minus 28 equals 0. So what does this equation look like? x squared plus 1 over x squared can be written in terms of x plus 1 over x. So pretty much everything here can be written in terms of x plus 1 over x. So that is the critical piece. Let's go ahead and replace it with something. How about t? We use a t a lot these days. I don't know why, but t is kind of, I think, fun to use. t equals x plus 1 over x. And then from here, if you square both sides, you get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2ab gives you 2. And then if you isolate this from here, x squared plus 1 over x squared becomes t squared minus 2. So we're able to find this in terms of t, and we're going to plug it in. But let's go ahead and do the same thing for t cubed, or x cubed plus 1 over x cubed. So if you cube both sides here, 
you get this. And if you expand it, remember my formula, the way I use it, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab, that will be x times 1 over x, which is 1, times a plus b. That's the formula I use all the time, but you can also use a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed as well. I just like this better. So, here's what I have. I want to find this in terms of x plus 1 over x, which is t. So, I want to isolate that. Let's do it. x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus x plus 1 over x, which is t, equals this cubed, which is t cubed. Make sense? Now, x cubed plus 1 over x cubed becomes t cubed minus t. Well, actually, I forgot the 3. It's supposed to be t cubed minus 3t. Okay. 2t, not 2t, 3t. So now, this is going to become minus 3t. Awesome. This is x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, and this is x squared plus 1 over x squared. Let me go ahead and write it here so you can see them together. All right, cool. Now, let's go ahead and plug these in here. Okay? So I have x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, which is t cubed minus t cubed minus 3t. And then I have x squared plus 1 over x squared, which is t squared minus 2. And then I have x plus 1 over x, which is t itself. And that's equal to 28, or minus 28 equals 0. Great. Now, this equation is obviously much, much better than a hexic because it is cubic. And cubic equations can be solved. There's a formula, but you can also sometimes guess and check. Or use rational root theorem. Let's organize these uh, these terms t cubed plus t squared minus 3t plus 2 plus t is minus 2t yay 2t or not 2t by the way 2t is a really interesting word if you think about it tutor and 2t it's a, such a weird word i don't think people ever use that anyways so t cubed plus t squared minus 2t minus 2 minus 28 that's going to give us minus 30 so now we got a cubic equation. So what am I going to do with this equation, right? Trial and error. Yay, let's go. <laughs> well, if you look at the rational root theorem, it gives, kind of gives you options. But after some trial and error, t equals 3, you're going to realize that it's a solution. And the factor theorem gives us t minus 3 as a factor. Let's go ahead and factor that in to this. How? I'm going to manipulate the terms, which is something that I like. Some people don't like it. They just do long division. That's fine, too. But I'm going to do the following. t cubed. To get at t minus 3, I have to subtract 3 t squared. Do you agree? Because if you take out t squared, you get t minus 3. So I'm kind of like making it divisible by t minus 3 all the time. Uh, of course, at the same time, I'm keeping track of things, so I don't really add anything unnecessary. t squared requires that I need t for t squared, but that requires that I subtract minus. Um, not subtract minus. Subtract 12 t. And then I have to get 2 t. 2 t again plus 10t, that's going to give me negative 2t, and then finally you get minus 30 and you're done. Awesome. Now factoring by grouping is going to give you t squared times t minus 3, 4t times t minus 3, and of course this shouldn't be a surprise, right? t minus 3 is a factor, we knew that all along, but we, not, we wanted to find the other one, and guess what? This is not going to give you any real solutions, no real deal. But what is t? Let's go ahead and find out what happens after that. t equals 3 is going to give us what? What is t? t is x plus 1 over x, right? So if you set this equal to 3, you should get real solutions. Multiply everything by x. 3x equals x squared plus 1. Or x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. And this should give you x equals 3 plus minus root 5 over 2. So those should be good, right? And then what about the other ones? t squared plus 4t plus 10. Hmm. I'm going to subtract 10 and add 4. You're going to see why in a little bit I'm completing the square. That's going to give me t plus 2 squared equals uh, square root of 6i squared, which is negative 6, by the way. And from here, by square rooting, we get t plus 2 equals plus minus square root of 6i. And t becomes negative 2 plus minus the square root of 6i, set it equal to x plus 1 over x, solve that equation, and you'll get the complex solutions. 
but you can do that, right? Easy piece of cake. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.